have your Bibles this morning, I'd like to ask you to please turn to Isaiah. We'd like to read from Isaiah chapter 2. Isaiah chapter 2. We'd like to read the first three verses. Isaiah chapter 2, beginning with verse 1, the Word of God says, The word that Isaiah, the son of Amoz, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall come to pass in the last days, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow into it. The main thing verse 2 is saying that in the last days, and this is a prophecy, Isaiah is speaking here about 700 years in the future, from the time that he wrote these words in the last days of the Jewish nation when the old Jerusalem was going to be destroyed and the new Jerusalem was going to be established there was going to be a mountain different than the mountain that they had always worshipped in it was going to be a mountain where they would worship God in spirit and in truth that mountain of the Lord was going to be established in the top of the mountains verse 2 says it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow into it. The kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God is Mount Zion. It is the mountain that is under consideration in verse 2. Verse 3 says, And many people shall go and say, Come ye, let us go up into the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. So we have this mountain. On that mountain is the city of Jerusalem, and in the city of Jerusalem, is the house of God or the temple of God. And we as the people of God, we need to pray that God will help us to realize that we need to be inviting others to go to the mountain of God, to the house of God. That's what the, that's what the prophecy says in verse 3. He says, And many people shall go and say, Come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. Are we supposed to be telling other people, Come with us to the house of God. Indeed we are. We're supposed to be saying, Come to the house of God. Come ye to the house of God. Come ye to the mountain of God. God calls us and says, Come. Uh, if you back up to the previous chapter, in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, God says, Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. So does God call us to come? Yes, he does. Jesus calls us to come. Jesus, Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28, Jesus says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So God says come. Jesus says come. Hold your finger here and turn to Revelation chapter 22. We'll see that the Spirit says come. We have been studying about the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, Revelation chapter 22, the Spirit says come. Revelation 22 and verse 17, the Word of God says, And the Spirit and the bride say, come. So God says come. Jesus says come. The Spirit says come. And the bride says come. Who is the bride? The bride is the church of Jesus Christ. So we have God the Father saying, come. God the Spirit says, come. And Jesus says, come. And the church is going to be telling other people, come. Now, Isaiah chapter 2 and verse 3 tells us what they're coming to and why they're to come together. There's a reason that we have come together to get today. There's a reason that we come together in the house of God on Mount Zion in the New Jerusalem. 
In Isaiah chapter 2 and verse 3, we have the answer as to why we are come together. We have the answer as to why we're to invite other people to come. In Isaiah chapter 2 and verse 3, the word of God says, And many people shall go and say, Come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. I want you to know, brethren, that every time the people of God go into the house of God, every time we go into the mountain of the house of God, we're always going up. We're going to something higher and something better than we have anywhere else in the world. There is nothing in the world that compares to going up to Mount Zion or going up to the house of God. I don't think we all realize how much we ought to appreciate the mountain of God and how much we ought to appreciate the house of God. There's no organization like the bride of Christ. There's nothing like the church of Jesus Christ and we need to thank God and the, and the church of God church of Christ is defined in, uh, in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 15 the church of God is defined as the pillar and ground of the truth so I want you to know brethren that the, one of the reasons that we go to the house of God is to hear the truth of God's word to hear the word of God Scripture says in John chapter 17, Jesus says, Thy word is truth. God's word is truth. The church of Jesus Christ is going to say to other people, we're going to be saying to other people, Come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. Now what is it that's going to be taught in the house of God? If it's really the house of God, if it's really the church of Jesus Christ, the main thing that's going to be taught there is the word of God, the truth of God's word. The rest of that verse explains that. It says, come let us go to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways. You know where we know, how we know what are the ways of God that come from the word of God. There's no other way you can know the ways of God except looking at the word of God. God teaches us his ways in his house, on the mountain, in the house of God, through the word of God, he teaches us his ways. The rest of this verse says, and we will walk in his past. There's a promise that these people are making as they're saying to other people, they're saying, come, come to the mountain of God, come to the house of God, and God will teach us his ways and we will walk in his paths. Brethren, that's a covenant that every one of us needs to make today. Is that we will walk in his paths. That we will follow God's word. There are some things in God's word that are very, very difficult to follow. There are some things that God tells us to, to do in his word. Especially in our day and in our age. We live in a time where many of God's children have turned away from God and turned away from the house of God and turned away from the truth of God's word. And as more and more people turn away from the truth of God's word, the people of God and, and many, many churches that have been called churches, they cease to be churches because they stop teaching the truth of God's word. Tell me why do you think a church might ever stop teaching the way of God? Why would a church ever stop teaching the ways of God? Why would a church ever stop walking in the ways of God? Why would we ever turn away from the truth of God's word? There are many times in our lives, brethren, that when we hear what God's word has to say, we don't like what God's word has to say. They're hard for us to accept. Many of the things that God says in his word, in fact, I'll tell you that everything God teaches in his word is contrary to my nature and your nature. Amen. If you look in, in your Bibles in Isaiah chapter 55, the word of God explains the difference in God's ways and sometimes it's hard to accept God's way. It's hard to accept the truth that God teaches us in his word. 
And the reason is because the world is completely opposite to the Word of God. What the world says is opposite to what the Word of God says. In Isaiah chapter 55, listen please to verses 8 and 9. We're talking about the ways of God versus the ways of man. Isaiah 55 verses 8 and 9. The Word of God says, God says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. Do you hear what God declares very plainly there? My ways are not your ways. The book of Proverbs makes this statement two times, and it's made many other times in the Word of God, that there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, the end thereof are the ways of death. And you and I as a people of God, before we can ever follow God, we have to be willing to give up our ways and our thoughts and just say, God, just show me the truth and we will walk in your ways and we will follow your path and we will do what your word says regardless of how we feel. We have to give up our ways for God's ways. It's hard for me and you in the flesh to accept what God's word has to say. And verse 9 says, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Brother, you and I as the people of God, we need to pray that God will help us to do what Isaiah chapter 2 and verse 3 says. Isaiah 2, 3 says, there's going to come a day when many people, you watch, watch this now, and many people shall go and say, come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. Is there any organization in this world that's as, that's as, as, as important as the house of God? Let me tell you something, brethren. There are a lot of other organizations. There are civic clubs in this world that do a lot of good. But there is no organization in this world that ever takes precedence or equals the church of Jesus Christ. And you and I as a people of God, we need to understand the importance of the church and the truth that the church adheres to. We're taught in the Word of God in Jude uh, verse 3. We're taught that we're to earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. God's word doesn't change. God's laws don't change. And there's a major change that's taking place in America today that is not of God, it's of the devil. And you and I, as the church, ought to be as violently opposed to those changes as liberals are when we try to adhere to those truths that are in God's word. It's a shame and a disgrace that the enemies of God are more determined to stand in their evil ways than many of the Christians are to stand in the truths of God's holy word. You and I need to pray that God would help us that we might be willing to say to other people, come, come to the house of God. We want you to hear what God says. We want you to hear God teaching us His ways. We want to follow God's ways. Because his ways are perfect.